What up, everybody? It's Pastor G. It's Lady T. It is her. And she's wonderful. I'm thanking God for uh, this Monday. Monday. Monday, February 18th. Wow. It's moving. And it's moving incredibly fast. Um, I want you to understand something very powerful. Your life is progressing and it's progressing very quickly. There's things that are developing in your life at the speed of supernatural. You will see God's intervention in your life. Now, these are good things now. These are good things. Get ready for God to catapult, to urgently shift. As uh, in the service yesterday, Pastor Deidre so eloquently reminded us that it's a time for us to shift into destiny. Destiny is happening for us. Destiny is happening for us right now. I want you to lay hands on that. I want you to literally see it in your mind. Imagine in your mind that this is the season that God is allowing me to walk into my true destiny. My true destiny. He's giving me true definition of who I am. And he's going to allow me to walk into my true destiny. I'm going to discover in this season that everything I've gone through, everything I've had to encounter, all of the, the down, the hits, the pains, the, the, the mishaps in my attempts to be what God called me to be. And sometimes it was a mishap because I didn't know fully what that was because I've heard so many people tell me what it was. But this season of your life, God is going to allow you to walk in the true destiny, the truth of you, the, 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 the definitive you. Get ready. I was thinking just a second ago, every time I get ready to do uplift, I always say to, to her, this is the first thing that I say, get in position, get in position, get in position. I will already have set up everything prepared to do the uplift. But even with me being prepared to come live, we still got to get in position. Hear what I just said. Get in position. Things, the table has been set. Now the only thing left is for you to get in position. Prepare yourself and prepare yourself like you know that it's going to be big. Yes. Prepare yourself like you know that what God promised you, it is going to happen this time. I don't care how many disappointments, I don't care how many things have failed, I don't care how many times they have failed. This time, get yourself in the proper position and you're going to see everything that God has already set the table for. The table has been set, now it's time for you to get in position. Get in position, do you hear me? Get in position and don't get in position with your complaints. Yes. Do not get in position with complaints. Uh, make your mouth supernatural compliant. That means that everything that comes out of my mouth has got to agree with what God is trying to do in me. Make sure your mouth is ready to see the goodness of God in your life. This is so important. This is so important. Psalms 103 says that angels are in position waiting for the command of God's word. Yes. That is so important that you understand it. They are not in position to work waiting on your complaints. Mm. They don't need to hear you complain in this season. They don't need to hear you talk about how tough it's been. They don't need to hear that. They need to hear you speaking words out of your mouth that will create a destiny that is so incredible that it makes some noise like you've never made before. So now that you understand the table is set, you need to get in position and make sure the things that come out of your mouth our kingdom compliant because this is your season. Yeah, because it's time. It's here. it's here. It is upon us. And so you need to make sure what you say is what you pray. Yes. Because they're waiting. They're waiting to move for you. They're waiting on whatever your command is. Yeah. And if your command is foul and negative, they are there waiting. Yes. They are waiting. And all that they know is that what you're saying is what you're praying. Yes. And so they're going to uh, be obedient to the voice of God to, to listen to your hearken unto your voice. Yes. So you need to make sure you need, need to make sure. I mean, because this is a time again, it is the shift 
the shift has happened. This is February. We're in the second month of 2019. And it has come so rapidly. Mm -hmm. Everything is just happening. I had a grandbaby at the end of uh, 20, 2018. Mm -hmm. And just to see that little girl every day, she's only, she's only uh, eight weeks, not even eight weeks. And every time her papa, when he talks to her, she's looking directly in his eyes. When I talk to her, she's looking directly yes. in my eyes. Babies didn't do that before. It's because everything is has accelerated. been accelerated, yes. exponentially yes. accelerated. Yes. It's time. You better be ready. Get Go ready. ahead and get yourself together. Yes, yes, yes. So 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 here, here's what David says in, in Psalms 39. And we're kicking it off with this because I felt that so urgently to say this into the ears of someone that's listening. I will keep my mouth in the presence of the wicked because what I say out of my mouth gives power to angels that excel in God's strength or give power to the enemy that is against my destiny. My God. They are waiting for me to authorize a move and whatever comes out of my mouth will give authorization to either my future or it will give uh, power and authority to the destruction of what God has said. The power of death and life is in your tongue. This is why we're so urgently today saying, get in position. The table has been set, but God still needs your authorization by what you say. God's earthly authorization is given by my verbal declaration. I've got to declare what God has said about me, because that's the moment I authorize him to go to work in my life, yes. to actually make that come to pass that he's already set up for me. I've got to say it so that I can see it. Yeah. I've got to say it. Now, she says something very powerful. Numbers 20, uh, 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 14, 28 says, the words that you say out of your mouth are the words that you pray. So what you say is what you pray. This is God warning Moses uh, and to tell the people that I heard every moment, Mercy. everything that you said out mm. of your mouth, I heard it. I am God. I hear. I hear you when you don't think I'm hearing you. So be careful that everything that comes out of this mouth, don't say it according to what you're going through. Mm. Say according to what I promise you. Yes, God. Say according to what I promise you. Thank you guys so much. We are so excited. Thank you, Prophet Pam, for being in the house. Rhonda, I see you. Uh, Barbara Babs Woodrow. What's up? Thank you, guys. My friend, Apostle Anthony Bradford is in the house. Love you, man. Hey, Mom is in the house. Sylvia Wilson. Hey, Jackie Dyer. Mashana Cooney. Conley. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Pastor Deidre. What's up? John. My new friend, John M. Uh, Coulter is in the house. Uh, Yolanda Bills. Hey, what's up? Now, now, here it is. Let me get this out into your hearing so you can continue to be a blessing to young Nathan Diamond. This is our month of blessing young Nathan Diamond. Thank God for all of you that have already uh, uh, sown your seeds. If you want to sow again, here's a perfect opportunity to do so. You cannot bless someone more than God will bless you. Everything that you give, God. Now, hey, look, when you give a, a, a gift to this young man who is uh, being challenged by autism, uh, no young parent should ever have to neglect their child care because of financial issues. You, me, or them. So we want to bless them so that God, I, I, every, when she said, I look at my grandbaby healthy, I thank God for it. And so it made my heart go out to this young couple on theirs so that we can bless them. So let's continue to bless them. Uh, put the address out there really quick. Put the address out there so that they can see it because I know people today, they want to give. They want to get in on this, and I want them to be able to receive the harvest. When you give, it's a, a, a name to see. Ask God for something. That Ask God to really look upon your babies. Ask God to really make ways, open doors up for your children, and I believe and we agree with you that God is going to do just that. Now, here's the other thing I need you to do real quick. Go ahead. While I'm talking, go ahead and share. Share that. Share that uh, uh, info. Go ahead. After this is over, go ahead and begin to give. Now, here's what I want you to know. Here's what I got to get into. Here's what we are here for today. Share this, share this, share this, share this, share this, share this. I need you to get some people in the in this room today that are struggling with some things. Yeah. Sometimes life gets so difficult that you can forget what you were created to be. Because after you've seen a series uh, or repetitive uh, downfall, sometimes you tend to think
because of the repetitiveness of your uh, uh, mishaps, that that's really who you are as opposed to all the good stuff you've been hearing about yourself. And it's very easy. It's very easy. It's very easy. I don't care who you are. It's very easy to get in a slump after you've seen things happen over and over and over and over again. I'm talking to the real folk today. Some people are never in a slump. They don't recognize mm -hmm. that, I guess. You see them in a the slump. But I'm talking to real people. It's easy to get in a slump. So sometimes the thing that you need most is a reminder. Fake people need a reminder. That's why we must rehearse the word of God concerning us into our ears constantly. Or in other words, you need somebody to rehearse in your ears constantly that you are what God said you were. Faith cometh by hearing. That's why today we're going to remind you. So tell somebody, 10 people, 20 people, uh, 50 people to come into the house today. We are on. We are on. Again, position yourself now. I told you, when we got ready to come live, the first thing I said to her, let's get in position. I had already set everything up, already prepared everything for lunchtime uplift. The only thing was left is that we got in position. If I had a set somewhere else, we would not have been in position. We would have been sitting. It's time to get in the proper position. <laughs> the proper position was right here in the front of the camera. I could have been at the table. I could have been in the bedroom. I could have been in several places. But you got to define the proper position, and you need to get there quickly because the table has been set for something major to happen. And if you don't agree with God and get into the proper position, you won't be able to see it. If we had not landed in the proper position, they would not see us right now. They might have heard us, but they wouldn't see us. How many times have you heard from God, but you didn't see his hand? It's important that you get in the proper position so that you can see the manifestation of what he's saying. Now, we're in a different location today. I want to speak this into the ears of somebody that need to hear it. You see, our background is different because we last night was instructed to take a trip. We 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 uh, impromptu took a trip last night. We're not even in Little Rock. We're not going to tell you where we are, but there are opportunities that are opening. Get ready; they're going to be spontaneous in this next season. It's going to be incredible expansion. Incredible expansion. Prepare yourself and prep yourself for expansion. Prepare yourself for God to drop something in your spirit that to your own abilities and resources, it might not seem possible. But to God, it's the easiest thing in the world to do. Only thing he needs is an agreement from you, is an agreement from you. And he's going to drop it. Don't be surprised. Hear me. Don't be surprised at the promptings that God gives you in this next season of your life. Don't be surprised what he says to you. Be prepped to move at his command. And sometimes God will drop this thing in your spirit and don't even give you time to think about it. He says move because he knows if I give you time to think about it, mm -hmm. that's the time uh, the enemy needs to talk you out of it. Yeah. If I give you time to think about it, it's the time the enemy needs to talk you out of it. Don't let the enemy talk you out. Be spontaneous and immediately move on what God is saying in your life. I needed somebody to hear that. We are out. See our background different. We're in a whole different room in a whole different city, but we're here prepping for expansion. God is going to bless you with, with an immediate, immediate instruction, and you're going to jump on it. You're going to jump on it. You're going to jump on it. And by the time you think of what you were doing, you might be in flight. And God says, it's too late to change your mind now because you can't get off this plane. <laughs> so we're thankful today. Now, here's the, not, here's the title of this uplift today. If you have not shared us, go ahead because it's going to be very important that you share this today in this expansion season. Is is it important. Now, I'm, I'm coming across people and it scares me because there's so many people that don't believe in this season that God is real. Hmm. And he's up to something supernatural. Don't let this moment pass you by by just being a regular. You can get stuck in a rut, a rut by just being a regular. You don't see anything new. Uh, we're just shifting from one uh, regular thing to the other, one mediocre thing to the other. That's not my season. Mm -hmm. My season is to see God do some things incredible outside of what's been seen. And I'm not going to be scared to do it. Yeah. 
I'm going to move on it because this is a season that God uh, intended for you to do it. Blessings, blessings. Bless you, bless you, Pastor Gibbert. Here we go. Bless you, Pastor Gibbert. Uh, I got I got another friend of mine on here, Walter Witherspoon. Pastor Walter Witherspoon in Dumas. I think it's True Harvest in Dumas, Arkansas. What's up, my brother? Exodus chapter number three, verse, uh, 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 verse number three. I'm going to share this. I'm going to share this. The name of this uplift is called The Recall. The Recall. Get ready because this is a season of The Recall. And I'm going to explain this in detail today. I'm excited about it. I'm trying to get my scripture here. Exodus 3. Uh, what did I say? Exodus 3, verse number 3. Now, here it is. Here it is. The Recall. I'm going to read something to you. Here's, here it is. Moses, whom have been running for 40 years. Listen to this. 40 long years he's been running. He's found a place that he could run to because he's running for his life because of the incident that happened in his life, in his prior life. He's trying to help a brother out. <laughs> and trying to help a brother out, he got himself in trouble and he heard uh, that there was an uh, indictment against him and actually a verdict had come down. Uh -huh. If I catch you, I'm kidding. And so he's running for his life. And he's run 40 years of his life. He's, he was 40 when he started running, and now he's 80 years old. And here's what happened. It's a recall from God. <laughs> it's a recall. I need, to, I need you to hear this. <clears throat> There's some people that's been running, and now you're about to hear the recall from God. You're about to hear the recall from God. You're about to hear a recall coming. Now, I thought about this when God dropped this in my spirit. A recall, I thought about my car. Mm -hmm. uh, my car, uh, my, your truck, we, we, we purchased her uh, a, a Jeep Cherokee. And uh, truck, beautiful thing, right? new, everything. But about two months in, we got a notification that there was a recall. Now, it kind of shocked us because the truck is new. But there's a recall. Here's the thing about recall. They don't make you bring it in. Mm -hmm. They're just telling you that it would be in your best interest, and it's free, to bring what you think is operating properly back into the shop because there are some things that are malfunctioning. There's something in this thing that you call beautiful and new and functioning uh, to your expectation but there is a recall yeah. and you need to bring it back in so that your truck can be serviced so that the life of what you think is wonderful will last even longer. Mm -hmm. This is what God is saying to so many right now. You're operating and you think everything is going wonderful, but there's a recall because you have forgotten about something. You can't uh, 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 detect that there's something that is malfunctioning because you think everything is so wonderful. And he's calling you back in again. Yes, yes. He's calling you in and saying, I need to prepare you for what is called the long haul. Mm. Because if you're not careful, you're going to get set up. You're going to think that everything is wonderful. And you're going to allow the enemy to continue. And his desire is not to just upset you. His desire is to rob you of your soul. Okay. And so God's saying right now, let me pull you back in. In your good moment where you think all is well, or in your thoughts of, I never had it this good before. And after all the things I've suffered from, and after all the things I've done, this life right here is pretty good. God says, good is not good enough when better is possible. Yes, and he's pulling you into the recall right now because there are some expectations of what he's trying, or where he's trying to take you. And he knows what is in you, and he's got the right to say, bring it in now. Yeah. And when I recall you into the shop to service you and to fix those things that have been dysfunctional come in because if you don't come in and agree i'm not responsible to what happens if you don't answer the recall so it's time to come in and so here it is moses is running 40 years he's 80 years old and god began the recall. There's some of you that's been struggling, been running, you found a niche, if you will. You found a place where I'm comfortable, where people don't require nothing out of me. I'm good, I got a good life, I got a wide children, a fence, I got everything going on. And God had the audacity to come and tap you on the head or the shoulder and say, come here, 
I need to tell you something about yourself that perhaps you even forgot. Wow. But I know what I placed in you. Yeah. I know what I put in you. I put great destiny in you. And I want a return on my investment. Yeah. Now, Moses is 80 years old, so I'm talking to the whole gamut. I'm talking to young folk. I'm talking to middle-aged folk. And definitely, I'm talking to old folks. Here it is. Exodus chapter number three, verse number three. And if you have not shared me, go ahead on and share me. I need you to hear this today. Thank you, Dr. Salento, being in the house. Uh, Napoleon Jackson, bless you. Here it is. Here it is. I need you to hear this today because the recall is happening. I'm going to start at the second verse. Let me start at the second verse because I think the second verse brings emphasis. It says, and, oh, oh, first verse. Let's go to first verse. And Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Now, let me suggest something very powerful because this starts out by Moses being happy with keeping the flock of somebody else. Okay. Uh, I'm talking to people that you are happy in your position. You ain't asking for number one. I'm good with what I am. But what God has said, I've invested something in you that maybe you ain't asking for it, but I've asked for what I invested. And don't feel bad when God comes to you and says, I've given you something that is so incredible that's going to bless people, and I can't let you hide behind somebody else. I just can't let you hide behind somebody else. Now, somebody else that you are behind and you happen might not get it all the way. I'm sorry. That's okay. You're going to have to obey God in this season. Please hear me. I'm not telling you to get a rebellious spirit or rebellious nothing. I'm telling you, you're going to have to obey God. Yes. And I would rather obey God than man. So here it is. Moses is happy because he done found him a, a wife, a love, and he's at Jethro's house, and he ain't responsible for nothing but keeping some sheep. Come on. You done, you done wed yourself into comfort. But you done wedged yourself into complacentness. Mm -hmm. And now here comes the tap of God. Say, listen, listen, no, 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 no. No, ma'am, no, sir. I didn't call you to be mediocre. I didn't call you to that. I've invested something in you. Life has been hard. Life has been difficult. You've been running. But I'm calling. I'm giving you the recall right now. And then and the second verse says, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. Emphasis is flame of fire. Please stay with me because that's going to be very important. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. Number one, he's at Jethro house, happy. I ain't worried about something. I found my niche. I'm comfortable. I'm complacent. I don't have to uh, 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 feel the brunt of life. I can follow behind somebody else yeah. and I can be good. I'm, I'm the supporter. I ain't, gotta I, lead it. I ain't got to lead it. I ain't got. I, that's good. Number one. Number two. Here's what I need to emphasize. It says that an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. This is very important that you understand this. Very important that you understand it. When things start burning in your life, when the fire is turned up, it's not there to destroy you. It's there to get your attention. Mm -hmm. Some of you that are listening to me right now. The flames of life have been turned up. And if you listen to what people say, so perhaps it's the person that you're serving right now, when they see the fire in your life, they are telling you that you're probably thinking about leaving me. And if you if you leave me, everything in your life is going to be uh, uh, tore up or burn up or broken down. This is the flame of God that is here to get your attention. If you can ever get your mind in the right place, God didn't do anything to destroy you. All things are working together for your good. When he starts burning things or when things start burning in your life, that's him actually tapping you on the shoulder. That burn is a tap saying, listen to what I'm about to say. Listen to the instructions that you're about to get. Listen, when you start seeing unusual things happen in your life, do not judge the unusual by what you were going through in your life before. You are judging the unusual by the usual. Because you've had a series of breakdowns, which are, you say, it's usual that I see a, a mistake. It's usual that I'm disappointed. Don't judge this unusual moment by your usual okay. moment. This is not the time for that. God has given you an unusual moment mm. to break the mundane of the usual. He's saying this is the only thing that is going to get your attention when you see something burning, such as your life, and it can't burn you up. Mm. <laughs> 
You've been going through thing after thing after thing, and you call yourself a failure, but you never took the time to realize, I've been going through trial after trial, fire after fire, and I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm, I'm, I'm still just as strong as I was. Are you listening to me? The fires of life is God saying, I need to get your attention because I'm trying to take you somewhere. Right, yeah. I got to get your attention. Sometimes it takes a drastic action from God to really shock your mind back into saying, oh, my God, whew, I was living the life of a zombie. Yeah. I was just following uh, the, the habits of my life. I had created a bunch of bad habits in my life, and I'm just doing what I do in my bad habit. But God comes on the scene. He does something different. And if you're not careful, you're going to listen to the definitions of life with somebody else and tell you, God must be mad at you. God must be mad at you. No, God is trying to get your attention. Why is he trying to get your attention? Because he doesn't place something in you that you allow him to lay dormant. You done got into a comfortable place. You done got into a complacent place. And he says, I won't dare let you live like that. After I have invested all of this yeah. in you, I've allowed you to go through moments mm. that cause you to have to push and have to struggle. What happens when I'm pushing and I'm struggling? God is building your muscles for the race that he's about to present to you. Get ready. Every trial, every tribulation, every struggle, everything that you've gone through, you're looking right now and you're declaring, I made it and I don't know how. Well, listen to what God is saying. You made it because he wanted you to. Yes, sir. And so the angel, now listen, the angel of God is appearing in the fire. The angel of God is appearing to you in your fire. Mm. Our God is a consuming fire. He's a, con say with me now, because here, here it is. And so it says, and, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed was not consumed. You saying, I've been burning a long time. Why don't I just burn up? I'm done with this. Why don't I just end it? God said, you can't because I don't want you to burn up. I just want you to catch on fire. Ooh, my God. Mm. <laughs> I didn't send this to burn you up. Mm. I sent this to ignite you mm. for your next life. I sent you to ignite you. God is trying to ignite your life. Now, here it is, the third verse. Here's the third verse. Here you go. Here's your posture. It says, and Moses said, and Moses said, sometimes you got to have a conversation with yourself because the only other thing out there was sheep. Okay. And it says, and Moses said, see, God will isolate you so you'll talk to yourself because <laughs> you've been listening to the wrong voices <laughs> tell you stuff about yourself that wasn't true. And Moses said, he's looking at the burning bush. He said, <laughs> that's so powerful to me. You got to you tell yourself something that perhaps you never said to yourself before. In the midst of your fire. It says, and Moses said, I will now turn aside. I will now turn aside and see the great sight. Here it is. You're about to turn aside and see the great sight. If you're not careful, you're going to look at the burn and say it's a disastrous sight. But in this season, God is going to let you look again and say, here's a great sight. The, the burning that, that never could consume me was here to ignite me. That's a great thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's marvelous. It's the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in my sight. He said, I'm looking to see the great sight. I used to interpret this as something bad when I was in the company of people that wanted to keep me down. But now that I'm out here by myself, I'm going to talk to myself. And I'm going to say to myself, Moses, yes. you've been through a lot of things. You had some incredible disappointments in your life. But you're still here. But you, you're still moving. It. You're still strong. You still got a lot of life to live. And you're going to look at the fire and you're going to say, it is a great sight. This is marvelous. God is with me. He never failed me. I didn't like the outcome of things most of the time, but I'm still here. God was always there to protect me. You know, when you get by yourself, you have those valuable conversations. Mm -hmm. You remember. You begin to remember. When you can get by yourself, you start remembering that God has been good to me. God has been, he's been so good to me. He never let me fall. Mm. He never let me get out. There was times I wanted to get out. He says, you can't. And then he will strengthen me. 
to move on a little further. That's a great sight. You are great in your own right. It says, and Moses said, I will turn aside and see the great sight. Why the bush is not burning. God wants you to ask the question. Why haven't I been destroyed? Why, why couldn't that take me out when it took everybody else out? Why didn't that come and make me lose my mind when everybody else done lost their mind? He wants you to ask yourself the question by yourself, why me, Lord? So that he can answer it. He's ready to answer it. When you start seeing unusual things happening, it's a tap from the Lord saying, pay attention. Yes. Pay attention. Pay attention. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Yes. I want to show you something. God is trying to show you something. Here it is. The fourth verse says, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, mm -hmm. when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, this is very important. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he says, here am I. Here's what God wants you to say in your reply. Here am I. Here am I. That's what he's trying to get you to say right now. He's not trying to get you to tell him about all the things that you're going through. Only thing he needs to hear you say is, here am I. Now watch this. That was very important. And when the Lord saw that Moses turned aside to see, here's what God is saying. If you get up enough gumption to turn to look, he's going to start speaking to you. If you can get up enough courage to say, hmm, what is what is the meaning of this? When you get up enough courage to agree with God mm. and say, ah, oh, something is unusual about this moment. It says, and when he turned aside to see, God called out in the midst of the bush and said to Moses, Moses, and he said, here am I. The fifth verse says, and he said, draw not nigh hither. Hold on. Hold on, Moses. Hold on, Moses. Don't come close yet. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. Stay with me here. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. What? The place of the fire? The place of my struggle? The place of my disappointment? You are calling it holy ground? Really? How can you call this disaster something good, God? How can you declare that where I've been has been something good? You call it holy? Now, holy is, by definition, a separation. Yes. It's called separation. So what God is saying to him, this is holy ground. This is the place that you come that your trials and your, your, your problems have caused you to be uh, ostracized by people and pushed out. That's what holy means. Holy means separate. The, the, the very thing that you've gone through that has caused people to turn their back on you has caused it to be a place called holy. It's a place called separation. This is so important. This is so important that you get this. The bushes burn. It's not an indictment against your life. It's a, a tool of God to get the attention, get the attention of, of, of the person that he's trying to. And he's letting you uh, realize that I've been burning, but I have not been consumed. Things have been coming against me, but I'm still here. Mm -hmm. So now he's saying, turn again to see that unusual thing. And when you turn again, or when you answer the recall that I just placed on your life, yeah. I'm going to start speaking to you again. I'm going to start speaking to you in the place of your greatest trial. Right. I'm going to start talking to you again. I'm going to start saying some things to you that you were not ready to hear before. Mm -hmm. And now he's telling you, don't come close until you take off your shoes. Now, let me break that down. Let me unpack that because that is very important. There's two things that is going to be required in this recall season. Number one you're going to have to turn to hear once again or agree with God. When you hear the voice, you're going to have to make the move to say, God, I'm paying attention. Mm -hmm. God is not going to make it. He's going to give you an unusual event, but you still got to agree. Because Moses said, I will turn to see. When God uh, realized that he's ready to hear, he starts speaking. God never speaks until you posture yourself to hear. He never speaks 
and definition until you posture yourself here. Number one, I've got to get myself in position mm -hmm. to hear what God is saying. Number two, he says, take off your shoes. You are not ready to hear what I'm about to say until you take off shoes. Now, what is the shoes? The shoes, if if you had a took both of shoes and pulled the tag up, it would have said, all man made. Mm. <laughs> you would have discovered it would have said, all man made. In other words, God is telling Moses, I can't speak this into your ear until you get rid of everything in your life that has been man made. If you don't get rid of the man-made ideas, you won't be able to hear because where you are now is holy. It's a separate place, and I can't have you bring all the man-made stuff into my place and into my presence because I don't want to fight with the voices from your men. I don't want to compete with what you've heard people say to you. I can't compete. I will not compete. You're going to have to turn in the midst of your trial to hear what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to take off everything that man has created in you. Because if you don't, it's going to compete with what I said. Get into position. Now, Moses is running 40 years of his life. God will never speak to you. Here's some things that people are wrestling with right now. God is pulling you into a position that called, that's called, here's the position. It's called, I'm to myself. Hmm. <laughs> I'm to myself. <laughs> Even isolation. <laughs> Even isolation. Isolation. The place called lonely, you thought was an indictment. But God says, when you get there, that's the place that I don't have to compete with people. I don't have to compete with all this man-made stuff that you have been a, a, a qualifying life by. You have been saying, if I don't be this, or if I can't do this, if I can't, if I if I'm not that, if I don't have the proper clothes, I don't have the proper car, mm -hmm. I don't have a proper house, about it, that's all man-made. God says that's been the thing that calls you not to hear what he's saying. And so now he's he's allowed your life to catch on fire. And he's brought you to a position called isolation, called lonely, called by yourself. And now he's tapping you on the shoulder and saying, now here's the place called holy. Here's the place called uh, 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 I can talk to you again. Mm -hmm. Here's the place where I'm not competing. Here's the place that you don't have to play no games. Come on. Here's the place that the only person you got to talk to is yourself. Moses said to himself, this is the place that you are the one that having a conversation with yourself without influences. Mm. You can talk there without having to worry about when you say something out of your mouth, people say, is you crazy? That's the place God is trying to get you. So for those of you that are sitting in this moment right now, don't count it a cursing, count it a blessing. God is pulling you to this place of no distraction. God, ooh, the God is pulling you to the place of no strike. Listen, 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 listen. Matthew 16, verse 15. Matthew 16, verse 15. Watch this. I rediscovered scripture again because they all mean something. Here it is, Matthew uh, uh, 16, verse 15. Jesus asked the question. Jesus says, whom do men say that I am? Yeah. Whom do men say that I am? Now, you got to get this. Now, Moses is in a place called Lonely. I'm by myself. I'm, I'm, I'm isolation. Mm -hmm. And he's talking to himself. Uh -huh. Now, Jesus, Matthew 15, Matthew 16, verse 15, say, who do men say that I am? Now, here's what you got to understand about God. When he asks a question, it is always rhetorical. Mm -hmm. Meaning, he's not asking you to get an answer. God is not asking you for an answer. When God asks a question, he is trying to engage your mind in something that he's about to redefine. When God asks you a question, he's about to engage your mind in something that he's about to redefine. If he says, what is that? <laughs> he's not trying to get information. He's trying to redefine something that you have lost the definition on. Yeah. And he's bringing your attention back. So when Jesus asked the question, say, 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 whom do men say that I am? 
Who do men say I am? Now, he's not asking to get an answer about what men say about him. He's asking because he wants some men to redefine what the men have said. Because he says, if I'm going to do something supernatural in your life, I've got to get the definitions changed. And I got to let you know, I'm not really asking you about what they think about it. I'm just scrutinizing it in the question. Mm -hmm. Because if you are going to move on to greater things, you're going to have to drop what men say about you. Mm -hmm before the doors and the keys to the kingdom come up. Now, Peter gets a revelation from God and say, thou art the Christ. Mm -hmm. In other words, this is the, in defiance of what men think. Mm -hmm. Because when you go by what men say about you, you are defying God's purpose in you. Mm -hmm. So he asked the question, who do men say? Not to get an answer, mm -hmm. but to redefine. And he asked the question, and here's the question of your entire life to be successful or to get the keys to the kingdom, to get a doors open that would never close. You're going to always have to define what does men say that defy what God has said. Yes. You're going to have to always come to the place and say, men said this, but that's not what I'm going to do. Men might define it as this, but that's not what I'm governed by. God never asks questions to get an answer. Mm -hmm. He always answers questions, so you won't have to question him. When he opens it up, he's about to answer so you can be relieved of the question. Mm -hmm. Please hear me. Please hear me. Every time, every time, God brings you into a place where you can drop your men off because he ain't trying to compete with those voices anymore. This is the season you're doing well. You're living a mediocre life. There's no challenges there. You think you good. I'm good right here. I, you know, you know, Pastor, I ain't never tried to be number one. I'm humble. Everybody else does that. God says he ain't listening to me. Why? Because he knows what he's invested in. Yeah. Your humbleness will be proven by your obedience to his call and the magnitude thereof. Wow. Please hear me. Now, there will be rule changes. Let's talk about this. Rule changes. Rule changes. Somebody write that in. Rule changes. This is very important. This is the season that rules will be broken in your life. Please. This is the reason why you are in isolation mode. This is the reason why you come to the place where you don't see your best friends. This is the reason why you've been positioned like Moses so you can say to yourself, what are you going to say to yourself? There's some things that I need to change. Because when you get by yourself, you start realizing how much work you done put into pleasing the people that were around you. Okay. Some of you are so tired right now because you have spent all of your time trying to please that crowd. Some of you right now are worn out. You have completely been depleted of your strength because you're trying to play the men game. Mm. They done, get, they done given you a title, and you got to live up to that title. I'm speaking to all the walks of life. Enough, There's some enough. people that's been given titles. It's only there to bring you into bondage because every time you get ready to do a God move, you got to say, what does men say about this? Because they gave me something to bring me under a burden to make me be subject to them. I've got to follow that. I've got to stay within the guidelines of their limitations. Mm. So here it is. There's going to be some rule changes in your life. And this is why God brought you to the place where there's no competing forces. Because he wants you to change some rules, some things that have governed your life. They could be community governance. Mm -hmm. They can be societal governance. They can be ethnic governance. This is very important, especially in this volatile season that we're living in right now. Yeah. You have been governed by something. You've been given a mindset. You've been given a way to believe, and you cannot move outside that. If you vary one iota, you are ostracized by people. But what has happened in this thing, we have been caused to follow rules of people that has caused us to walk outside of God's ordination on our lives. And if I walk outside of God's ordination, I don't care how many men love me. If I'm not following God's new order for my life, I'm not seeing the blessings of God's life. Here's a scripture that so many are familiar, and they quote. It says, if I am for you, I am more than the world against you. That's truth, but here it is. If he's against you, he's more than those men for you. 
If he, if you're out of the order of what God says, he don't want to hear about how many votes you got to do what you're doing. He says, the only thing I needed you to do is do and follow one vote. And that's the creator's voice that he put inside you. See, God is a God that still rules by what is called theocracy. He's a sovereign God, and he knows what he created when he created you. He know in definition what he decided for your life to be when he created you. See, we live in a world that's called a democracy, mm -hmm. where we can take a vote on and decide whether we're going to change this and change that. Well, that's not in kingdom. In kingdom, there's one king, and he rules by theocracy. He said, I didn't ask you if you thought it was good. I didn't ask you if you thought it was the right time. Come on. I didn't ask you if you had enough resources. All I told you to do is follow me when I lead. Wherever I lead you, you follow. That's what God is asking in the season. He wants some people that are saying, Lord, whatever your desire for my life is, I am ready to move. Yes, I, sir. Man, it's 1246. <laughs> God, so here's the rule change. I got to get this in your life real quick. I got to get some rule changes. Number one is who to hate and the who, who to dislike. People have governed who you like and tell you who you need to hate. I don't care. We don't we don't talk to them. We don't talk to them. Please hear me, my brother. So do not let somebody get you in a place where you are completely out of the will of God for your life. Because the scripture says, the, the, the song says this. I love I love the song says the safest place in the whole wide world is where? In the in the will of God. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. Number two, they try to tell you who you can talk to and who you can help and who you can't help. Really? That's why I'm telling you. There's going to be some rule changes for the bold people that in this season, I'm going for what God has got for me. I would not be denied. And God's going to push you in the corner and say, now, nah, let me change some things. If you really want what I got, let me show you how to get it. If you really want what I got, let me show you how to get it. And so he brought you to this place called Lonely because you've been competing with all these good voices Come that's on. trying to give you an alternate route to the blessings that's on your life. God said, I don't need an alternate route. I've got a, I got, I got a way that is distinguished for you. Watch this. Now, we've talked about Moses. Remember, Moses is having this conversation. woo This is so powerful. Moses is having a conversation with the creator of all things. Mm -hmm. The God of the universe, the God of all things, Moses is having a conversation with the great I am. You are about to have a conversation with the creator. Please, my brother, this conversation that Moses is having is engaged by God. How many times have you tried to have a conversation with God and it seems like he didn't answer you? But this next season of your life, he's going to engage the conversation. This is why it's so important to get in position and prep yourself for what is about to happen in your life. Here it is. Moses is engaged in a conversation with the Almighty, the creator of life, the God of heaven and earth, engaged by God. And he is trying his best to convince the creator of all things that this stupid decision that he made, the crazy decision that he made about him is totally out of the question. This is what he's doing. He's telling the creator of all things that you just told me that I was something that I know I'm not. How many times have God, the creator of life, come to you to tell you what his plan is for your life. And you, like Moses, try to tell the creator of all things that this is the craziest idea I ever heard. You telling me? No, 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 no. You don't, you, how many times have you told God, you don't, you don't get it. Look at me. I'm keeping sheep for somebody else. And you telling me I'm going to be somebody that you're going to use to deliver people? The preacher tell me. Really? <laughs> How many times have you allowed your situation to rebut the Almighty? How many times have you caused what you were going through to, to defy the word of God that, that tells you that you're going to need faith to jump for? God has already had the conversation with Moses, and he told Mo, he's telling Moses, boy, I need you to go prepare yourself because I'm going to send you somewhere that you don't want to go. Mm. 
Moses is rebutting him. I don't think God is really, 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 really talking about me. How many times have you told yourself and told God, I'm not the one? Yes. No, no. Yeah, I, I, I went with you. I was going with you. But when you said it was me that's going to do this, what you just showed me, you picked the wrong person. <laughs> and then you on the end, you say, you picked the wrong person, Doc. <laughs> okay. Not me. <laughs> Thank you. But I'm not the one. How many times will you rebut what the Almighty is saying to you? Because he just painted a picture of something that you've never done before. But he says, now it's the season for you to walk in the supernatural. I'm putting your life into something that I created you for. You didn't see it, but I've seen it the whole time. And I've called you for such a time as this. How many times are you going to rebut the call? How many times are you going to refuse the recall? Now, remember, Jesus asked the question, who do men say that I am? In other words, how many times have you rebutted what God said because somebody told you that you couldn't do it? Somebody that was important in your life told you you never was going to be capable. Somebody told you, good men, your mentor, your, your advisors, your family members that told you, no, nah, not you. How many times will you judge yourself by what men have said and refuse the call of God that is on your life? Here's Moses' problem. Here's why he's telling God that he's crazy, because he's been on the run. Yeah. And his running was because somebody in his family told him, you ain't who you think you are, <laughs> or you are never be what you think you are to me. Mm. You will never, you will never be that. And so 40 years, he's running with an orphan spirit. 40 years. How many of you right now have been running from the voice that's in your head? Mm. And you're finding out every time it sabotages your every moment because you get wonderful for a minute mm -hmm. and then here comes that voice. My God. Here comes that voice saying to you, remember from good people, from mentors, from people that you admire, the people that you're trying to impress, all of those people that which have told you because they didn't understand who you were. And now they try to define you based off their limited ability because they were never able to do it. Now you have found yourself nestled in a good place under them, like Moses keeping Jethro's sheep, and now you become comfortable there. You become comfortable with underachieving. This is the season that God is tapping you on the shoulder. He says, it's the season of the recall. I'm bringing you in and I'm going to fix all of the malfunctions. Mm -hmm. Everything that is causing a malfunction in your life, I'm coming to your space right now to fix it because there's greatness in you and you are going to have to live according to God's purpose in your life. Life. Are you listening to me? So here's the problem. Moses is, is sending, God is sending Moses back to face and to confront the thing that he's been running from. Mm -hmm. Number one, you're going to have to face something that you've been running from your entire life. The very thing, because this is going to be very important when you're moving into a season that you're going to need the confidence of God in. Who do men say I am? He's already telling you. Either you're going to listen to what men say or you're going to listen to the definition and revelation of God. Peter gets the revelation that thou art the Christ. When, in other words, when I get a definition of the Christ in my life, it'll automatically define what men say. Mm -hmm. And so when you are walking into this great moment, there's a moment that you're going to have to face all of those that you had to run from. Every voice that you heard, everybody that taught you erroneous, everybody that, that, that told you this was the way it was, everybody that told you it couldn't happen, every voice, every word that gave you limitations in your life, God is going to say, you're going to face it, and you're going to face it with information. You're going to face it with experience. You're going to face it with confidence, knowing that I've been hit, I've been burned, I've been knocked down, but I'm still here. And you're going to be able to answer it. And you're going to answer it from the definition and revelation of God upon your life because he needs you to have confidence in this next season because he said, I'm recalling you. The reason why I'm recalling you because I'm putting a requirement of that that I placed in you from your mother's womb. Moses was stuck in denial mm. by his mom. Literally in Egypt, stuck in the Nile River. How many of you have been stuck in denial by somebody that you love. 
and God mm -hmm. is telling you, face it, but you're going to face it with confidence because we're going to have a meeting before you go to the meeting. Mm -hmm. God is giving you a meeting before you go to the meeting. This is very important that you get this. This is your season. Moses having to come saying, I can't do it. I, I, I'm not capable. I, I, I don't have this. I ain't got the right clothes. Uh -huh. I don't have the right house. I ain't got the right car. I ain't got nothing. And God says, I didn't ask you about that. Here's what I do want to ask you. What do you got in your hand? Uh -huh. What do you got in your hand? Listen to me. God asks questions never to get answers. God always asks questions to engage your mind in something that he's about to redefine. What do you got in your hand? He's about to show you that there is something that you have taken for granted. There is something that aided in your handicap. There is something that you got that you say is nothing. Moses says, I got a rod. I got a crutch in my hand. God says, if I take possession of what you got in your hand, if you will allow me to redefine what you got in your hand, I'm going to declare to you that you have the supernatural at your fingertips. You've been discredited. It's because, here it is, very important. You have allowed what you got going on in your head to limit what you got in your hand. You have allowed the conversations that you got going on in your head to limit what you got in your hand. Mm. The conversations that is going on in your head came from people that you trusted, but they didn't know who you were. They told you you were incapable. They told you that you would never do it. They told you that with what you got is never going to be enough. They told you your education was not enough. They told you the family that you came from is not enough. They keep telling you that you are a loser when you know something inside you is burning that say, I might not have none of that. I might not have came from that. I might not have ever did anything. But this time, this time, God wants somebody to have a conversation with themselves aside from the, the naysayers, aside from the haters, aside from the people that told you that they couldn't. He does not want in this next season of your life that what is going on in your head, the voices to hinder what you got in your hand. Because he says, I'm going to start with what you have discredited. I'm going to start with what you have taken for granted. Because if you can trust me, if you will let me put my super on your natural, you'll see something in this next season of your life that men would be uh, dumbfounded by. Because I'll get glory just because I've done it in you. They know that you are incapable. They know that you would never be able to produce this in your life. They know it. And so I'm going to allow you to produce it. I'm going to allow you to produce it. If you can trust me with it, if you can get rid of the voices, mm -hmm. if you can get, you are in Christ now. Please hear me. Any man that is in Christ, Corinthians 5, 17 says this. He is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Everything, the conversation, God has brought you to the place of isolation so he can redefine some things in your life so that you won't define yourself by the voices from your past. The experiences from your past. He needs you to see this. Please hear me. This is so important because God cannot allow this to be produced or manifested in your life until you are ready and you can see him uh, the way that he desires for you to see him. This is so important. Now, remember, the, this, this video started out by saying, I had set this whole thing up, prepared for us to come live. But the last thing before we came live is what I said, what I shouted to you. Get in position. Let's get in position. There's things that are set up for you right now, but you're going to have to get in position. you got to get in position. You cannot, please hear me, please hear me. And I'm going to be done with this. I need to say this to somebody, and I'm going to be done. I'm coming real close because I need to say this. It is important that you allow God to be real in your life and redefine in your life. There are so many things and th uh, uh, good things that are happening right now, and there are substitutions in your life. God is not going to allow this great thing to happen for people that have not defined him because he wants the glory in your life. He says, I give you victory in every area if you give me glory. Don't accept the acceptable substitute, the good things that are uh, uh, different from what I designed in your life. It's going to be very 
easy for you to be deceived if you have not been redefined by God in your mind. Please hear me. Don't let the voices that told you that you will never do it make you so hungry and desperate that you will accept anything that looks good. Please hear this. Exodus 32nd chapter, I'm going to paraphrase, you can read it on your own time. Here's why God is so, so right now screaming out. Be careful, be careful, be careful what you accept and what you allow to happen. Because everything God puts in your hand, he puts in your hand for a purpose. It's to bring him glory, not to take his blessing and give glory to something else. Mm -hmm. It is not his desire. There are many right now that are trying to get the blessings of God, but they don't want to give him the credit for it. It's going to come to a, a very definitive end quickly. Boom. Because God says, if I give it to you, I need you to know that I won't glory for it. Don't get caught up. Exodus 32, real quick. God blessed a people that had been in bondage 400 years. Stay with me. A people that had been in bondage 400 years. A people that had been robbed of identity 400 years. A people that had absolutely nothing 400 years. A people that had been slaves. 400 years. Please stay with me. God allowed Exodus 32, a people that was in abundance 400, a slave 400 years, that had nothing for nothing that they called their own. He tapped them on the shoulder and said, let me give you a recall. Let me tell you who I created you to be. Please, I promised your forefather Abraham that I was going to bless you. Here it is, Exodus 32. They come to the point that they have left. God says, I'm about to take you out of bondage, Exodus 11, 12. He says, before you leave this place called bondage, I want you to go to your neighbor who were your captors, who, who held you captive and borrow of your neighbor, silver and gold. Please hear me. So that your children can understand what it's all about. He, he allows favor to come upon a people that were slaves 400 years and they were able to go to the Egyptians who were their captors and borrow it and they gave it to them. Move forward. Exodus 32, here's the people that had been in bondage 400 years, slave, lost their identity, all of that, blah, 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 blah. Here it is, Exodus 32, the, the, the very God that had blessed them with silver and the gold, if you have not defined what God had given you and given him credit, you will take the blessings of God and turn it into an idol. Mm. Aaron, the prophet and the priest of God, the priest of God, took the gold and silver that God had blessed a people that had been in bondage 400 years, that didn't have anything, that didn't have, not have any identity, took that gold that God had blessed them with and turned it into an idol. Or and as the scripture said, they turned it into a golden calf because the voice of God they didn't hear. Mm -hmm. And when you are not listening or can't hear the voice of God in definition, you will take what God gave you as a blessing and turn it into an idol. The wealth that God had allowed them to obtain through his favor, they now have created something to give the praise and worship to. Here's what is so important that you understand. That when God has given you this wealth and he plans to do it, do not turn it into an idol. Because we know the end story, it did not turn out well. Now, they got it from God. God blessed them. God favored them. But he says this, I can bless you and I can favor you. But I will not allow you to turn my blessing and give glory to something else. I will not allow. This is a scene that I got to be very careful that I don't take what God has blessed me with and not give him the glory for it. And it's, it's happening more now than we've ever seen before. People are trying to take the blessing of God and give the credit to themselves. It was me that created this. It's my strength. It's my ability. It's, it's mine because they were mad at Moses. Woo, this power. They were mad at the prophet. They were mad at the preacher. So now I'm going to create something. This Moses fella, I don't know. I don't know what he's, I don't, I don't know. So now because I've been hurt, by the church, I'm going to take the wealth of God and I'm going to turn it and I'm not going to give credit because I'm mad at a man. Oh my God. We are living this very moment right now. We got to be very careful in this season that we don't take what God is trying to bless us with. This is why he's trying to correct what is in your head, in the voices, your hurts, your pains, because he does not want you to allow the enemy to walk in and take what he's put in your hand because of what you're having going on in your head and appropriated in the wrong place. 
Amen, amen. So get in position. God is speaking again. He's redefining himself to you again in this season. This could be the greatest moment of your life if you follow the instruction of God. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this word today. We thank you for this uplift. We thank you for the heroes. We thank you for being God. Thank you for using us in this moment. We say yes to your will, your way. We're obedient, Lord. I pray that this word sink deep into the heart of the heroes yes. on today. You are doing something incredible in their lives. And God, allow them to say yes in spite of what they're going through, in spite of what they're hearing. Let them say yes to your call. Yes. And we thank you for that today in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Yes. Thank you so much. There again, this month of February, we're giving to young uh, Nathan Diamond. The address is in. Go in here and find the address. If you can, really quickly, stick that address in there once more so that people can see it. I want you to go give to this. Amen. Uh, uh, share this video. Share this video. Share this video. Share this video. Share this video to people that you know are struggling, trying to make it over. Let them know that God is with them in spite of what they're going through. God is with you. His, his desire is for you to come into your wealthy place. Amen. Share it, share it, share it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Pastor DJ. Thank you, Mom. All of you guys that tuned in today, Pastor Angela, thank you guys from all over, Pastor Nolan, everybody, all over. We, we, I, I've got a meeting here in just a second. I've got to run, but I will upload this video to YouTube later on tonight. Blessings, blessings. Remember, 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 expansion is in this season for you. Expansion is in this season for you. For those that are getting in position, the table has been set. Now get in position because there's expansion coming. Here the voice of God and obey his prompts. Walk out on faith. Yeah. Pastor G, Lady we are out of here. I've got to go. I have no more time. Thank you guys so much. Holla.